I'm Julia Montano, and I am the only child of two protective, well-intentioned parents. So when the house is boarded up for the summer, it's almost impossible to go hang out with friends, so you have to make new ones. Next slide. These friends, to be exact. The 90s sitcom Friends is not only the greatest Netflix binge ever, but it's also a staple to pop culture for even kids my age. Despite that, some of us weren't even mentally capable of comprehending the adult comedy when the last episode aired in 2004. The TV treasure is subject to millions upon millions of those annoying pandering quizzes that you find on social media. Hit next six times, please. I don't think we need 74 million results for you to determine whether or not you like meatball subs just as much as Joey Tribbiani. With that said, I'll spare you the personality inquiries, but I want you to determine for yourself, which friend are you? You may be unfamiliar with the show itself, but with the given attributes, you may find them resonating within yourself or your own social groups. Next slide, please. Next slide. Meatball subs. Amazing. So let's start off with Monica. Monica is the bossy, uptight mom friend. Though she is the most accountable and she's always there to extinguish all of your fires. Rachel, on the other hand, is your typical girl next door. She's presumed to be a trophy wife, but will prove you wrong at the end of the day with her determination, boldness, and confidence. Phoebe is way on the other end of the spectrum. She's the charismatic loon that we all find extremely endearing. Motivated by a tragic backstory, she has a big heart and embraces her eccentricism. The guys, on the other hand, like Ross, is your typical geek. He'll discover later in life that there's more to living than just intelligence. Chandler is the receiving and giving end of every punchline. His Extreme sarcasm is there to mask his big, softy interior. And lastly, lustful and trustful, Joey Tribbiani is not exactly the most intelligent, but is definitely the charming heartthrob that we all fall in love with. Now, with that said, do any of these characteristics feel like yourself? I personally get the Monica card a lot, which I don't really understand because I'm not a perfectionist at all. Next slide. Oh. Uh, right. So the real answer is none of you. You aren't a Chandler or a Monica. You are you. And while that is extremely cliche, you'll find it shocking that a lot of teenagers don't fully believe in this. In my personal experience, I felt obligated to be the mature, humorless one, the one who always has to confront another when they've made a mistake, when I only ever wanted to be the antithesis of that. And I was fully f confirmed in my own self-expression that I had an eccentric and extroverted side to me. But that is the very struggle of adolescent identity. You see, in an age of internet personalities, faceless critics, and infinite phone screens, the desire to be someone is prevalent. And with that desire, we turn to these TV show archetypes and adapt to their characteristics, hoping that we perform a viable role not only in our friendships, but also for our viewers. I know that sounds strange, but an applicable quote by comedian Bo Burnham is, if you can live without an audience, you should do it. When we're not chasing each other around with open Snapchat stories, word of mouth becomes its own form of documentation. Who said this and who did what is a great influence in the decisions we make, especially at an age where self-deprecation is very, very popular. <laughs> so with that, the problem isn't as much to deal with acceptance. In fact, in an activity where students had to rate virtues like friendship, uh, self-respect, family values in order of importance, Fitting in was the least of our concerns. With that said, we do not fear to stand out. We fear that the, we're the ones that don't. That's a little bit ironic, right? 
That's why we're always beating each other to punchlines. That's why we're always creating new labels. I'm this, I'm that. As if that adds to our own personal value. But in reality, this character you're making only makes you less of yourself. In the connection with friends, yes, friends should love and appreciate you for what you are and not what you can give, per se. That's why we may not always be the kindest, but we may be the more reliable one. We all have these different uh, roles to play, but it's not stable. It's not written in a book. There's no definition for a good friend, a bad friend, or so forth. And this is why we need to put ourselves first. I have a big problem with being myself for myself rather than others. I'm not here to tell you how to be the best version of you. In fact, that's the very reason why I wanted to do this talk, because I was tired of receiving advice on self-expression that was just like, be nicer, be out there, be more friendly. Because for some of us, that's kind of hard. I mean, there's billions of people here, and you can't expect us to be all connected with one another in that sense. So take this with a grain of sand. You are the only person in a room. You have a name, you have interests, but without that, what is left? What characters define you? You see, we can't always look to Rachel and say, she's what's driving my life right now. This is what I'm going to be, and this is what I aspire to be, because she's not you. In fact, that's not even Rachel, that's Jennifer Aniston. So maybe the struggle to find new labels and terms is the very thing that's preventing us from finding our own status and our own name. Thank you. <laughs>